I'm June Calasso, and this is my husband, Raymond Calasso. Uh, we are from Goa, and uh, we are senior citizens, but uh, we are working, we got a good job in UK. Praise be to God. We got married in 1977. We settled to our life, normal life. And uh, we were like Sunday Catholics. And Raymond was working on the ship at that time. So there was a lot of money. And uh, we, our life was like just one big party, dancing, drinking, picnics, you name it. But God was kept, okay, he's in heaven, we are here. And uh, it went on like this. And uh, we were social drinkers with our friends, you know. And then uh, Raymond left his job on the ship because I told him, I said, I can't stay without you. So he left his job on the ship and uh, we tried to go to the Gulf because he was not getting a job. So we tried to go to the Gulf. We got a job in the Gulf in uh, Dubai in a five-star hotel and uh, there there was more money and the parties became more, the drinking became more, the smoking got more and uh, I used to drink with him also and uh, it was like really we were really enjoying our life, enjoy, 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 enjoy. Then uh, we got a chance to go to the Sarja also there also the drinking got more and I didn't realize that uh, Raymond's drinking was uh, getting a little too much. I also was having a ball so okay and then after it got to a time in the Gulf when he got so bad that uh, my boss told me put him in, an, uh, in, a, in a hospital. I said no, no I'm not putting him in a hospital. I said, no, he will be okay. I will see to it. It was, I, I'm look, I'll look after him. I'll see to it. But his drinking got worse. He was drinking on duty. He used to take the bottle inside his pant and uh, go on duty, drink on duty, sleep under the tables. And uh, it got to a time when my boss said, you just take him to go and leave him there. And June, you come back. Because I was working as a secretary and Raymond was working in the kitchen. So my boss needed me. I said, no, 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 I can't do that. I said, I said, I, uh, if I leave him in Goa and I come back, I said, he's going to drink and drink and he's going to die. I said, I only have one husband. <laughs> So I said, now the only alternative was I thought to myself, I said, uh, if I take Raymond and go back home, I said, I'll be able to sit with him, take care of him, look after him. So we put in our resignation and my boss refused to sign mine, of course. But I said, no, I have to do this. We left our jobs. We didn't have money because we didn't plan to leave. And uh, we just took our little last indemnity and we went home. We went home and both of us were at home. I used to take care of him. I used to see that he doesn't drink. He used to hide and drink, of course. And uh, that money, uh, it, it went off so fast. And we were in such trouble. We didn't have money, you know, relations, nobody helped us. And uh, like it was like desperate, you know, we didn't know what to do. And I said, I'll take a job. I said, that's the only thing. Raymond couldn't take a job because he was like alcoholic by then. So I said, I'll work. So I went to work. When I went to work, Raymond got worst and worst because I'm not, at, I'm not in the house. So his friends used to come, bring the bottles. They used to drink. By the time I came home from work, in the afternoon, Raymond was like drunk, sleeping on the bed, nobody in the house, no food. I used to cook, feed him, because I know he is drunk and he's not eaten. I used to feed him. And I used to go back to work. And uh, it came to a stage where I used to even lock him in the house so that his friends didn't come home. Anyway, 
it got worse and worse and I didn't know, I just didn't know what to do. And uh, one day I just told my Lord, I said, my Lord, I don't know what is happening. So my husband is sinking, I don't know what's happening. And uh, I did a hysterectomy operation in Pune. I took him to Pune with me. I did my checkup. And doctor knows him very well. Then doctor said, June, what is wrong with your husband? I said, what is wrong with him? He said, no, he's looking very bad. He said, he, he's not going to survive. He's not going to come back to Pune. And that really like shook me, shook me up completely. And um, came back from Pune. As soon as I said, I was so desperate and I said, my Lord, I don't know. I said, I just give everything to you. Everything I touch is turning to ash. Uh, one week after that, my cousin's wife called me and she said, June, I'm going to Pota. And I heard about Pota in Goa. Everybody goes to Pota. But we didn't get a chance to go to Pota because we were in the Gulf, etc. She said, you're coming to Pota? I said, okay. And she said, uh, ask your husband because if your husband comes, my husband will come. I said, okay. Then I asked Raymond, I said, Raymond, you're coming to Pota? He said, yes, I was never surprised. So I told her, okay, we are coming. But that one, uh, one fear was in me because he being an alcoholic, if he had to stop drinking, which I know when we enter here, we can't drink. I thought if he had to stop, he definitely would fall down. He used to always fall down when he used to not have one day. And that really scared me. I said, if something happens to him here in Pota, what will I do? But then she said, we'll go. I said, okay, let's go. And I, and I had my job. I said, if I don't work, I said, I'm not going to have anything to eat. But at that time, I said, I just leave everything and I'll, I'll just go. Whatever happens after that, I said, I'll just go. So both of us, uh, four of us came here to Pota and uh, we, didn't, we didn't know what to expect. The first talk that, uh, the first talk was on Jesus walking on the water. And I've heard it so many times, but there, that day I thought like, that the preacher was speaking to me when he said, when Peter was walking on the water, his eyes were on Jesus. And the moment he took out his eyes from Jesus, he started sinking. And the preacher said that, uh, this is our troubles, the water, the s storms. And I said, for the first time, I said to myself, I said, why am I looking down? I have to raise my eyes and look at Jesus. And I felt such a, all this burden and all this tension just vanished from me. Raymond, on the other hand, I didn't want to look that side because I was so sure that he is going to fall because he is to always fall. But that day, the first day, he was so restless. He just sat, getting up, sat, getting He didn't even know what was happening. But he didn't fall. I said, second day is going to fall. Sure, he always fell. And second day came and second day he didn't fall. And then I looked up and I said, my Lord, how foolish I am. I said, we are in such a holy place. And uh, Raymond was, you know, normal. He didn't know what was happening. He got better, a little better. And then they announced that uh, to come at uh, 10 o'clock to one of the buildings, like for a, uh, for a talk, means all the uh, alcoholics, the drug addicts, etc., etc. So Raymond said, come, we'll go. I said, okay, we went. We went there those three days and uh, they told us, uh, everybody was sharing what happened in their life, how, you know, God took away their alcoholism, took away their drugs. And Raymond heard uh, a testimony, both of us heard a testimony of a guy who was like penniless because of his drinks and and father had told him to write down how much of money each bottle, each day, each minute, and calculate how much of money he spent, etc., etc. And Raymond did the same thing. And we were so shocked that we spent so much of money and now like we are zero. 
But uh, we didn't have any experience, I think, but just the retreat was so wonderful. We went back home. We reached in the morning at about uh, 6 o'clock and we opened the door and Raymond asked me for the key of the cupboard. And Raymond had kept his bottle to drink when he comes back. And for that matter, I kept mine <laughs> to also drink when I come back. And when he asked me for the key, I said, this is it. I said, he's going to have, I don't know, I never said a word, no words came out of my mouth. I took out the key and gave it to him. And I was outside in the hall, he went in the cupboard. And suddenly I saw he's come back like so fast, you know, to the hall. I just turned around to see he had his bottle in his hand. He went out and he took the bottle and emptied it on the path. And I was so shocked because anyone who's to come to our house, even if they had a drink and they leave a little for like courtesy sake, when I'm going out to say bye to them, Raymond has finished all those glasses with that little, little in it. And when he poured out the whole bottle, I said, this was awesome. I, I, I just couldn't believe it and I was so happy. Then I thought to myself, I said, my bottle is in. I said, if he, maybe tomorrow he'll change his mind, he'll take my bottle. So I took, I went in, I took my bottle and I poured my bottle also out. And our friends who were passing by, you know, our, our drinking friends, party friends, one guy was passing by and that smell of the Goa, you know, alcohol. And he said, oh, wow, what smell? And what did you do? He said, no, he said, I poured out my, uh, my uh, feni. Why did you pour it out, he said. He said, you should have given it to me. You don't want to drink, give it to me. And then Raymond quoted to him what father said here. He said, what is poison to you, you don't give it to others. And we told him that. And he went away, okay. And, and father said, here when we left, Satan will be close behind and join a group. So from that day, both of us threw our bottles out and we said we are going to live according to what God wants us to do. And what Father said, then we joined, uh, we joined a group. Father said, join a fellowship group. So we joined a fellowship group, uh, the Couples of Christ. It was such a nice experience to be with like-minded people. And then even the Mass, the Mass was for me just I'd go, come back, you know, okay. But here when they explained the Mass to us, it was, it, it changed the entire, you know, it was so awesome. We started going for mass. We really, you know, to take part in the mass. And then Raymond got better. Raymond, he was alcoholic. He, he doctor had said he wouldn't survive. And he's, the, his insight, I don't know, his, I no liver, kidney, nothing. But from here we went home, not a single tablet no side effects, no symptoms, no nothing. And slowly and steadily he, he, he got uh, better, he had put on weight. And I was working and then he got a job, such a good job in a government, for, in a government uh, maritime academy. There he worked. God was keeping on blessing us blessing us. There we worked. Then uh, we had a house uh, from one house to another house because we only two of us and from one house to another house and you know God has blessed us so much and uh, then suddenly out of the blue he got a chance to make his Portuguese passport which we never ever dreamt. It was at 63 and I said, okay. I said, God wants to make it fine. And everybody was saying, are you crazy? Don't send him to UK. He's going to start drinking there because it's cold and everybody drinks there. Are you mad? They're telling me he's, he won't get a job. There are people there jobless. I said, see, God has given him this chance. I told him, you go. If you like it, stay. You don't like it, come back. And uh, he went to UK. His, my sister was there. He stayed with my sister. For two and a half months he didn't get a job and he was a little worried and then when he called me he said, June, see two and a half months I'm staying there. I'm not, I don't have a job. 
I said, see Raymond, I said, when God has done this much to you, he's not going to drop you in the middle down. I said, Raymond, he's going to take you through. With that, he, he, he got so encouraged. And I said, my Lord, at least one small job in one small restaurant, you know. But God gave him a job in a four-star hotel as a chef. Not only that, in like nine months he could take me. They used to drink in the hotel. These cooks, you know, on Saturday, Sunday, they, they are given free drinks. But see how God has protected us like and kept us, you know. Like no temptation, even when te no temptation at all, there was no urge. God was so awesome, he took away even the urge. Even imagine them drinking in the kitchen and he's there in the kitchen, we never felt anything. And then after nine months he took me. I was so surprised actually, everyone was saying what? Because you know UK how it is. And uh, God has blessed us from there on. We got a chance to work there. We're such a beautiful boss. He's a Gujarati, but British. And uh, we worked there. We were working there. And then we bought a new house. We had a small house. Now we, God gave us, God must have said, why are you staying in a small house? we will give you a little bigger house. So we got a little bigger house. And we got a car. We got, you know, a bike. And our life is, but we kept, to, even though we have everything, but we kept, we, we tried, like we're trying to come closer and closer to God. We, 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 want, we go for Mass every day when we are here. Even when we were there, we used to go for Mass on Sundays. Never used to miss Sunday or Monday, whichever day we get a holiday, whether it's cold or not. But I needed that Mass one week, once, a, once a, uh, one day in a week. And... Uh, here, when we come on vacation, women will always like go for mass every day, and we say our rosary. We don't want to like fall back. I said, my God, never ever let us be like separated from you again. Half of the things of my wife has already told, what we were and all. Yes, it is very true. I was completely alcoholic. I couldn't get up when I used to go to somebody's house. Like when I used to have a drink, I never knew where I was, like what I was talking. Then my wife used to ask me, she said, do you remember what you said? I said, tell me what I said at least. No, like it was in such a state, like I would not remember anything next day when I got up. It was like for years and years, years, as, but till today, now nearly 12 years since I'm not drinking, God has kept me uh, away from alcohol for this, for a gift from smoking also, as I said, I came here for five days, where I was drinking for 35 years, and I came here and I gave my drinks for five, within five days. Lord, for this I praise you, Lord, I thank you. Lord, from the gutters, you had brought me to your altar. Praise you, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I am Winnie Rodriguez. I am from Mira Road and I am a housewife. This is my third visit to the Divine Center. My son Ravi, who is working in Bangalore, suddenly couldn't talk. And when he went to the doctor, doctor told him there is some growth in the throat. And doctor was sus suspecting something wrong. So he, he, had a, he told him to do all the tests. And he did all the tests. And finally, doctor said he had to undergo an operation. After the, op uh, the operation was successful, then we all prayed to God. Jesus, we prayed. And I told Jesus, if my son gets all right, I'll definitely come to Divine Retreat Center for thanksgiving and praising. By the grace of God, my son, completely became all right. Now he joined his duty also. After some time, 2015, 
my daughter Roshni, she also had terrible back pain and pain in the breast. There also again we had the same problem. Doctor said there, should, there will be something wrong only with her, but she had to undergo all the tests. She went through all the tests and after that every, doctor said she is alright. Praise you Lord. Thank you Lord. I am Wilfred Pereira from Goa. I am a journalist by profession and I work as a deputy news editor at the Goan Daily called Herald. Before I came here, I was a Sunday Catholic, only going for Sunday Mass and maybe singing in the choir when I was in Dubai. After working for 17 years in Dubai, I left for Iraq on March 19, 2012. After I went there, since Iraq was a troubled country, and I was placed in Erbil, the capital of Kurdistan, I didn't know where the churches were, or did I take any interest to find out. When the ISIS came, the militants came in August 2013, we were evacuated from there. I had to return twice from the airport, but after it subsided, I went back to Iraq. But my visa got expired on December 23rd. And without the renewal of the visa, we could not move out. So it was the first time I had spent my Christmas without meeting Jesus, without meeting God. All this time I was praying. I was praying at home to take me just back to my home country. Finally, after paying the dues, which were paid by my company, I came back to Goa on January 23rd. I came here last year in November just to thank the Lord for bringing me back from Iraq, from Erbil. I had a lot of wounds and hurts, all the fears in me when I came. I heard a lot of talks as I was praising and thanking God, I suddenly felt a shudder of like an electric shock going through my back. I realized then that after that, my back pain had gone, which was there for the last four or five years. On the day of my counseling, there he gave me a verse from the Bible, Sirach 31, 13. And he asked me to read it. He said, my eyes are greedier and they shed tears. That was the first sign I received from God regarding my addiction to porn and vulgar chats. And I came back to the chapel and I stayed there and I said, Lord, if you want to take the addiction away, I give it to you. And during the inner healing session yesterday, which was conducted by Father Augustine, I was praying and offering this addiction to the Lord Jesus. As I was offering my addiction, Father Augustine called my name. I was shocked because this was the second message I received in two days saying that I have to turn. Father Augustine asked, Wilfred, do you believe 
that Jesus can take this addiction from you. Like the blind beggar, I said, Yes, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Strengthen my faith. I also prayed for all the other people like me so that they would give up that addiction because it hurts Jesus. I saw him on the cross there with all the wounds on his body. And I knew that I was hurting him. I offered it to him on the cross. I also want to ask forgiveness of those people whom I hurt, whom I afflicted wounds. And I thank the Lord for giving me the grace of forgiving and being forgiven. I don't know what the future holds for me. But being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, I know who holds my future. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.